Room 442 is brought to you by North Star Bets. That's a win. Hello and welcome to Room 442. James Sharman, Michael Singh, Sarah Peraria, Albert Vatanian will join us later today. This is the final 442 on Saturday until the new season next fall. Um, but a ton to get to today. Uh, we'll get to the Nations League very, very shortly. Um, later today, we're talking Team of the Year from Europe. From earlier this week, we did this. It's it's something. <laughs> Let's put it that way. It, it's something. You have Sarah's Brain Busters. Yes. Right? Not Birdie's Brain Busters. Sarah's Brain Busters. Yeah. Better or worse than Birdie's Brain Busters? <laughs> I mean, I feel like I've taken over for a while now. Just saw our, our editor, Sid, made it for me without even me asking because she's like, you've been doing it, so I wanted to make you a graphic. Shout out to Sid. We love her. But, yeah, I mean, hopefully it's good. I tried to go all over the board with this one, so we'll see. You guys have to tell me. The yeah, we'll, we'll see. The you gave us a little, little <laughs> teaser just before we came on air today, and it was really easy. Yeah. So hopefully it's harder than that. Yeah, more of for those. someone, more not of for those. Mr. Vartanian. <laughs> um, we'll talk the Canada match, by the way, in the next block. We have more time. Um, let's start, though, with USA-Mexico from Thursday night in the Nations League. Just an absolute gong show of a match. 3-0 USA, four red cards. The match was abandoned uh, late in injury time due to that, that notorious homophobic chant from the Mexican fans. Uh, before the match, the rumors were Greg Berhalter was returning to the States mm -hmm. team after all that other sideshow from, from the World Cup and, and between then and the World Cup. Um, I don't know where to start with this one, Mikey. I mean, Canada's <laughs> playing the States. We'll get to that later, yeah. okay? The States are a good team. They've got some suspensions now for the final, but this is Mexico USA. It's turning into a really good rivalry of nothing else at this point. Yeah, for sure. So I guess what, what I'll start with is that the environment there in Las Vegas was electric. You could feel that coming through the television. The people that were down there, you hear them talking about it, and they compliment the Mexican fans for coming out in waves. And one thing I'll say, I don't know if this is a hot take or not, <laughs> but I think Mexico has one of the best soccer Passion, passion for soccer in the entire world. Their fans come out in troves. They are so passionate. They're so electric. And when you fill that stadium with a bunch of passionate fans, it creates, like I said, just that electric atmosphere. So I got to give them credit for that. Not a hot take, by the way. That's, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, right? Because I don't know if they get enough credit for and just they, how passionate they are. And they get football they as well. Yeah. Right? They understand it. Yeah, definitely. When you talk about a soccer nation, you look at Mexico for sure. But there's the flip side to it where when things aren't going their way, even at times when things are going their way, they go and resort to that homophobic chant, which constantly gets them in trouble. And that's like the, the bad side of this, uh, the Mexican fan base. But nevertheless, as you mentioned, it adds fuel to this rivalry and what a, what a fixture, what a game it was. What do you do though, if you're, if you're FIFA, if you're CONCACAF at this point, you find Mexico, I think $108,000 mm -hmm. last time. It means nothing to the, these idiots. What do you do to, to stop this chanting? The referees finally, you know, warned the fans and then blown the whistle up early in, in this one. But will it make a difference? I don't think it will until they actually start taking points off this nation yeah. in tournaments. I think that would be the next step. I mean, they, this, this happened before and then they had to compete without fans. Yeah. So I think for that third place game, they shouldn't allow Mexican fans naturally. But I think that should carry on into the following tournament where you know they maybe have like five or ten games where they don't have any fans and a fine as well like extend mm -hmm. that and then if it happens again then go for points i don't think it goes points right away i think you have to extend that ban and not allow the fans and see maybe they learn teach them a lesson because i think the whole thing about this is bringing out the best in football and bringing out like good fans and people that actually you know are going to be positive so i i don't want to just deduct points right away i hope that it would be a learning process but i think you have to you know, ban their fans for at least, you know, five to ten games. And then maybe... The trouble is for the, the match on, on, on Sunday is that many of those Mexican supporters are Americans. Yeah, well... You can get in the stadium <laughs> anyway. Not saying they're the ones that are, sure. you know, causing the issue right now. But um, let's get back to the football itself, though. It was a really uh, compelling match. Um, the States are a good team. We know that. Yeah. Christian Pulisic, we talked about a lot on this show over the months. Good player. Tough year once again at Chelsea, being linked elsewhere, but shows what he can do. When he puts that U.S. shirt on, he seems to grow a few inches, it appears. Yeah, and you saw it once again during this match. He stepped up. He had an early chance, and he missed it. <laughs> a pretty it, golden yeah. opportunity. But then he comes back, and he's able to 
you know, fight for the loose ball. And what a what a great finish from Pulisic. And you're right, he is the guy for this U.S. men's national team and a team that is really starting to get well-rounded. When you look at the players and where they play in world football around the world, they play at top clubs in top leagues. And it's not just the 11 that are on the pitch. It's the six, seven guys beyond the 11 that are on the pitch. Their pool is so much deeper than everyone else's in the region. And I think we're starting to see the U.S. separate themselves from Mexico. And we'll see what happens on Sunday because you can even make the argument that they're starting to separate themselves from Canada as well. Well, listen, they had a very good World Cup, right? Mm -hmm. Last 16 played really well. The best of the CONCACAF teams by, by some margin as well. And I think it's you're saying 17 Tier 1 teams, as John Herbert likes to remind us. players, yeah. That's significant, right? Yeah. Fantastic team and going places with now Greg Berhalter back <laughs> in charge, we think. Not for Sunday. But for the next matches, um, you wonder what it means to Gio Reyna in that whole situation. He started last night. He's going to start a lot of games. He's that good. But it's going to be a little bit awkward, isn't it? Yeah, but listen, this is football. they got to be professionals. you got to play your best 11. And if he's one of them, you play them. You leave all that drama on the sidelines. I don't want to hear about it. Hopefully they can make amends and move forward because for them like you guys mentioned they have a solid team and they can do a lot especially with the World Cup coming in their home country yeah put that aside I don't think he would have been brought back if they weren't able to make exactly. amends I don't think Berhalter would be the coach of the U.S. Men's National League because Gio Reyna is just that important to this team's mm -hmm. not only right now but also future he's so young and he's so talented yeah he absolutely is but uh it's a bit of a soap opera, let's be honest here. <laughs> yeah. But uh, an interesting match in the States Advanced and Nations League final where they'll play Canada, of course, who beat Panama also on Thursday. When we come back, we'll break that game down for you. Room 442 is brought to you by North Star Bets. That's a win. Great night for Canada today. I got to the finals. Yeah, good start, good start. I think we knew this was going to be difficult today. They've been ready for us. They've been waiting 10 days. And I think our boys came through tonight with some real spirit and they showed their quality. Clean sheet, two goals, it's a good performance. You're talking about a good performance and the time you have to prepare the, this, this team for today. But right now, you have one more game and the finals. What is expect for Canada? Yeah, there's a couple of days to turn this around. We got, we'll have a few beat up bodies there. That was a physical contest, but we needed that. I said, they'll get forged in some fire today to get them ready for a final. And that, that was exactly the type of game we needed. Win and go to the finals. Yeah, I mean, it was an unbelievable game by, by the boys today. We knew coming this game. Uh, we had to play hard. We had to play strong. And that's what we did today. You know, um, we're happy that we get to win. And now we go to the finals. Uh, we keep the same mentality, the same energy, the same intensity, and move it to the next game. We're talking about the next game. What is expect for the next game for Canada? And what rival do you want? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the two teams that are playing for the finals next is uh, it's the two big teams. So, you know, we're just going to watch the game and see who we, who we, who we, who we play. Uh, for us, we're just excited to be here. We're excited to, you know, put on this performance for, for our country. And hopefully um, we can lift the trophy at the end of this. Thank you. Thank you. So yes, Canada have asked the final take on the States. Uh, Alfonso Davies there um, on the bench to start this one, Mikey, um, mm -hmm. coming off the hamstring injury. When he came on, he was the best player on the pitch by <laughs> some margin, uh, scored a beautiful goal. And I think at times I take Fonzie for granted in, in a Canadian shirt, but you see him yesterday, and it really is a, a man against boys at times on that wide wing back role. Uh, what a performance by Fonzie off the bench. Yeah, immediate difference maker. I think there were concerns that given that he hadn't played football since the middle of April, or the middle of March, I believe it's middle of April, but he hasn't played football for several months leading up to this match. There were concerns about whether or not he'd actually be able to play for Canada in general. And then there were concerns about, you know, he's, he's coming back from a hamstring injury, It's gonna be he's going to be a little rusty. Well, 10 minutes into that match, he alleviated all of those concerns <laughs> immediately, and I would say emphatically as well. What an absolute screamer from Fonzie. And, you know, he's talked about how... Recently, he's talked about this, how he was brought into Bayern Munich to replace mm -hmm. Iron Robin. And he wants more opportunities to not, you know, move out of left back and play 
that right winger role that he was brought in to do and play, just play higher up the pitch. And we saw exactly why, because he has the potential to finish chances like he did. Like, I, there's not many goalkeepers in the world that are stopping that finish from Fonzie. Short side, right in the roof of the net. Just absolute brilliant. brilliant I, I get it. But I mean, even John Herbin says, though, his best position is still at wing back. And in the World Cup, we saw him with that right wing didn't really work out um, without much experience there, Sarah. But. I understand where he wants to play, and we know Fonzie's brand. He wants to be the big man, and I understand <laughs> that, and so he should. And there aren't too many wing backs who can use that as a platform, right? He's so good at that left wing back spot, yeah. right? He's a weapon there, isn't he? Do you think he'll stay there, or do you think John Hubbard will experiment a little bit? It's hard not to experiment, right, when you see that he can score those kind of goals, though. We've seen it before with Canada, but he also, his pace is unmatched he's arguably one of the fastest footballers in the game right now so how can you not have him pushed back as well because you know he's going to make that tackle he's going to get to whoever he's defending it's just it's difficult there's pros and cons to both i get it why he wants to play up there who doesn't want to play up in front and score those goals but yeah you have to think tactically what is best for canada and then what is best for bayern munich that could be two different things he could be playing two different positions yeah i think that that's important to mention like he's when he first started playing for Canada, he actually started out as a left winger, despite the fact he was playing as a left back for Bayern Munich. Mm-hmm. Just because you can argue that left back, you're not as effective on the pitch as you are maybe as a left winger. It's just one of those, it's, yeah. if you were to pick the two least effective positions on the pitch, you're probably picking left back and you're probably picking right back. Whereas Fonse, if he pushes higher up the pitch, because of the quality that he has, he's still going to be the best winger on this team as opposed to how good he is at left back. But... Canada's evolving, and now you're seeing players develop. Now, do they have a, an out-and-out left winger to play in front of him? I'm not too sure about that. We saw Jonathan David playing a little bit of left wing. I'd rather not see that, to be completely <laughs> honest. Yeah. So maybe the best option for Fonzie will be to push up to left wing because they have people like Sam Atacube and even Richie Larea to a lesser extent that can play behind him. Tejon has played the left as well at times, yeah. um, obviously more likely on the right-hand side. Pretty quiet yesterday as was Ishmael Kone, who didn't have the best game. But these guys, they were rusty, right? Simple as that. They haven't played for a number of weeks. They looked out of sync. Panama, like like you heard there from John Herbman, you know, were trying to disrupt. Um, they didn't really care about playing football, but they know that's kind of how Panama plays, right? Overall, despite not playing superbly, it's a, it's a professional win, I suppose, as the old cliche goes. They'll take the win and then move forward to the States. But I think if you're John Herbman, you're probably content with that performance. Yeah, you have to be. Listen, they won. They won comfortably in a sense, but might not have been their best performance, their prettiest performance, but they're going to a final now against their biggest rival maybe. Like, that's massive for them. And as we all know, they haven't won a trophy in 23 years. Like, they're, this is as close as they're going to get. So they got to they gotta be proud. they got to go in with some, you know, positive reinforcement and motivation and, and got to try their best on Sunday. They'll be underdogs, yeah. yeah. but the States are missing some key players as well. Yeah, they are. Weston McKinney and obviously Serginho Des getting sent off. With Canada, you know, it was, it was a mature performance. John Herman's, one of the things he pointed to after the match was he looked back at that Belgium game. And, you know, Canada had more shots than Belgium. Mm-hmm. I, I believe they also outpossessed Belgium. They were arguably the better team against Belgium, but yet they fell short. He doesn't care about the way they play anymore. Mm-hmm. He just cares at this point about getting results because Canada are on the brink of getting their first trophy since 2000, right? And he, like he said, he doesn't care how they play. He just wants to find a way to get a result. And it won't be easy against a state's team that are, as John Herman pointed out, they're the big dogs of CONCACAF right now. So it, Canada will need another special performance like they had at Tim Hortons Field uh, a year ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and listen, playing against a full stadium of American fans too. Yeah. That's great. It's going to be exactly what John Herman wants his team to experience. You know, a lot of these players are playing in Europe. They're seeing bigger crowds, bigger atmosphere. But that's still a, a big one for them on, on Sunday if they can find a way. Because in recent years, I would say they've owned the States, but they've been the better team. They've won some big mm-hmm. games. They've drawn some big games. They got through qualifying as a better team. Going back to 2019, that famous night at BMO Field, of course, right? But like you said, the States are not the same states as someone qualifying. They, they are getting better. They are coming into their own. They are a better team than Canada. They're a deeper team than Canada. Doesn't mean Canada can't win, but it's a huge one on, on Sunday. Um, 
is Phil Neville the difference, Sarah? Is, is that what it is? <laughs> Jeez, no. I spoke about this with Albert yesterday, and it's just one of those things where I, I'm still shocked that Phil Neville is a part of this Canadian men's national team. Like, how bizarre, especially after the way he left Miami. The, the mess, the drama, the chaos on that pitch, on the sidelines that he caused. He's such a hothead, and I'm curious to see how this is going to work. I get the name. It's a lot, the stature behind it, and he's been in the game for, you know, so long. There is experience there, but there's a lot of drama involved as well. For the record, though, I mean, listen, he, he's been signed up, I believe, just for these two games, right? This isn't a full-time appointment. Mm -hmm. He's living in the States, has done for a while. It's a natural move, easy for him, make a couple of bucks get some more experience you know and he does bring a lot of experience too to the Canadian yeah. team let's be honest I mean people can criticize Phil Neville and you know some of those antics on the sidelines from Miami late in his reign didn't look great optically but the guy's got an incredible CV I mean not you know? with Miami not of late well, no, no 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 but as, as, as a football man I'm saying sure. you know, back at United back in the day but if they uh, lose, if they lose to the U.S., is there going to be, let's obviously depending on the game, if they do lose, how they would lose, is there going to be criticism on Herdman and then maybe some spotlight towards Phil Neville and no, say, what were you doing I, with that? I think just because it's Phil Neville we talk about him being, but he's an assistant coach. Yeah. He's not. He's behind the scenes. He's behind the scenes, right? yeah. And I, I think he gets a hard rep for what happened at Miami. Listen, this team was hit with severe sanctions. Yeah. You look at the quality that's on the pitch for that Miami team. It's not a good side, right? And they've been banged up with injuries. He had to deal with Gonzalo Higuain and all the drama that went around there. He still led them to the playoffs, by the way, last season and, and turned that, that ship around by benching Higuain and then slowly integrating him back into the mix. He's not a bad coach. You add the experience based on what he's had at Manchester United in a coaching capacity. I believe it was also maybe Everton he also coached. Another big mm -hmm. club that he coached at. Yep. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of experience. That's what you want. You want guys like that in this can Canadian men's national team program. It'd be great to see more Canadians given a chance, though, as well, yeah. to be honest with you. Yeah. But uh, still, uh, we're talking about Phil Neville, an assistant coach. It still <laughs> sounds a bit odd, yeah. doesn't it? Uh, still, big game, massive game for them on Sunday. And, of course, the Gold Cup is next with more of a developmental-type squad. When we come back, it is Sarah's <laughs> Brain Busters. Room 442 is brought to you by North Star Bets. That's a win. Well, look who's joined us, Albert Vitanian. Hello, Just my to friend. be embarrassed Whoa. through Sarah's Brain Busters. Oh, Usually Birdie's Brain Busters, mm. but she's stolen the segment from you. That's okay. What do you think of Sarah? I'd rather be on this end, I think. I would I rather think. be on that end, too. No, no. I don't like creating it. I it's like tough, I told you. Oh, it's more fun just to guess. Yeah, yeah. You don't Putting have to Putting them do the together work. takes a while. You... Like, if you really want to make them challenging, it yeah, takes yeah. a bit. It does, yeah. Oh, cry me a freaking yeah. river. Yeah. No, no, I'm doing a job. Oh, here we go. <laughs> the two guys who haven't done this before. I hope I, <laughs> yeah. I, hope I just <laughs> blow I these will. guys out. No I hope you do right too. Now. I hope you do too. Oh, wow. All right, so oh, take it away. Really... Wow, she's calling oh, me the geez. betting favorite, I think. Actually, well, I don't know. Let's see. I tried to keep it keep it interesting, keep it global. Uh, all right, as you know, we <laughs> start... Wait to sell it, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we start with guessing the player. I'll give you guys clues. On the players, and then later on we'll go career path. So first stop. Cool. I have never won an international trophy, but I've won the Champions League twice. I've played with the likes of Gerard Piqué, Cristiano Ronaldo, Frank Lampard, Diego Forlan, and John Terry. You guys want to marinate a bit, or should I? Keep going. Yeah, there. it's fine. It's fine. I'm, I'm, no I'm rush. Already. I'm so confused. All right, perfect. I have only. No, I'm going to change it. I have won 11 Premier Leagues. Ryan Giggs? No. Matt, you're out. 11 Premier Leagues? Yeah. 11? 11. 11? Are you sure? Gary Neville. I hope so, because I went through it yesterday. Is it Gary Neville? No. Mm, no Mikey, it's just on you. Take your time. 11? Think about Premier it. Premier Leagues? Give me the four I've line only ever one. played for one four club. Line. That's a big clue. I've only ever played for one club. Gary Neville. I've won 11 Premier Leagues, and he, but he's played with John Terry. He's played with Ronaldo. Oh, okay. False uh, goals? <laughs> False goals? Hey! Nice. Well done. Nicely done. Got like, those English internationals. I'm like, like, is it Beckham, Skulls? Like, who is it? Uh, okay, no, there that he was is. The bad that was good. That was really uh, good. Gary Neville See? Was bad I mean, that one, James. He's won 11 Premier Leagues? Yeah, I went through the wiki yesterday. Oh I had to count. never run, so. Yeah, yeah, no, then, no, no, yeah, never. Gigs and the, yeah, gigs and the, yeah, no, that, that era. That era, they were crazy. James, that was actually for you, so, you know, just yeah, do I, what you, well, do what you want with that. You couldn't. I, I yeah. listen, Gary Neville, Paul Scholes, exact same era. <laughs> You're fine. Gary Neville may have been a good answer. That Follow Gary Neville's career path. Let's go through these players. He actually could have been he a correct been an answer answer too. as well. Ryan Giggs, too. 
Did Gary Neville no. play with uh, <laughs> play for England? Yeah. Or he did? No, he did. Did he play with Diego Forlan? I think so. Yeah. At the end of his career. Okay. But anyway, For- I trust you. Forlan had like one or two seasons, you know? Yeah, not Yeah. Many. All right. All, all right. right. Let's All right. keep it going. <laughs> well done. Well done. <laughs> I played with Gabby Jesus, Fernandinho, and Ederson. I've won the Premier League three times. Fernandinho. Jesus. I've won the Champions League once. But the only country I have won. Sorry. The- Hold on. Oh, boy. Sorry. But the only trophy I've won with my country is a Nations League trophy. Banana Silva? Nope. See you later. You're done. Just like that. Sorry. Champions League once, but the only international trophies won with this country is a Nations League trophy. Ruben Diaz? Oh, I know this. Ruben Diaz. Oh, know Ruben. Sorry. Ruben. 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 Also. <laughs> Could it be? Yes. It c- totally. Ruben Diaz played with Gabby Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. At Man City, so did Bernardo yeah. Silva. Uh, ah. Oh my God! Wait, could our t- <laughs> and Joe Cancelo probably throw him in there? And Bernardo Silva played for Fernandinho. <laughs> <laughs> How many Premier League titles has he, he won? Oh, that's interesting. Oh, sorry, guys, I didn't that's mean okay. to. That's no, okay. No, hey, I got it right. It's all that matters. I'm not saying I'm right. Always, yeah. To be fair. <laughs> okay, yeah. Let's. As he ferociously googles a way to confirm. <laughs> He's cheating. Charms is cheating. I had more clues. Maybe if it's more of them came, it would. All right. Whatever. That's okay. It works. All right. <laughs> one, Wait, one, are you looking it up? Zero. Uh, Bernardo Silva has won Premier League titles. He has won. How one, many? Two. No, he's won more than three. He's won one, two. Uh, three, okay, so he's out. Five. Yep. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Perfect. He has five. <laughs> That's yeah. insane. I know. That's insane. All right, moving along. I've won the Premier League, the Champions League, the Europa League, the FA Cup, Liga, and the Primera Liga. The only international trophy I've won with my nation is the Confederations Cup. And he's won all those. I've played with Ibra, Fernando Torres, Lucas Mora, Solomon Kalou, Dibu Martinez, and Bukayo Saka. <laughs> oh my god. This like just you have to sit in this one, I Can think. Can you repeat it from the top again? Yeah. Oh my I've god. won the Premier League, the Champions League, the Europa League, the FA Cup, League 1, and the Primera Liga. The only international trophy I have is the Confederations Cup. What? I played with Ibrahimovic, Fernando Torres, Lucas Mora, Solomon Kalou, Emiliano Martinez, and Bukayo Saka. Okay, okay. Said in it. So he is. Bukayo, he's played with. Buk- I'm getting thrown off now at Bukayo Saka. I knew that one would throw people off. That's why I threw him in there. And Martinez played for Arsenal as well. I'm still playing football. Lucas Moore. Champions League. Lucas Moore played for PSG. He's a Brazilian player. Mm-hmm. He's a Brazilian. Plays one. Oh, why is this hurting my brain? <gasps> and he's played in Arsenal. Oh, that's a good one. I'm very pleased. And it can't be Martinelli. It's not Martinelli. Yeah. Can't be Martinelli. Who is it? It can't be Martinelli. No, can't be Martinelli. Can't be Jesus. Conf- oh my gosh. This is going to kill me, dude. Oh I thought you God. got it. Why'd you make that face? He played so this guy played for PSG. Mm-hmm. Totally played for PSG. Because he with Lucas Mora and Ibra. Yeah, yeah. Ah! You got any more clues? I can get some right now. Do you really mm. want to win the Europa League? Who did he win the Europa League with? Who did this person win the Europa League with? Do you want me to tell you who they won the Europa League with? No. Maybe that'll help. It was Chelsea. Won the Europa League with Chelsea. <sighs> Confederations Cup. Also won the Champions League with Chelsea. I'm just going to start throwing more clues. Pedro? No. No, it can't be Pedro. He didn't play what? PSG. But he won all those things. You're out. You're out. <laughs> yeah, but that, that, that... I know. This is... Oh, my goodness. Who is it? Oh, no. No, 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 no. Play the sack up. When did Saka come through? When did... No. No. I'm way off. I'm like, I'm like eight years off here. <gasps> he played with... Ah! With I oh. saw you see it. See it, Mikey. I don't know. I don't see know if it. This is it. Well, guess because we gotta get the show on the road, folks. All right, we're gonna waste my guess. No, no. Oh, what'd you say? No, I'm out. I'm, I'm, it's so far off. It's so far off. I have two. Well, no, give me. Come on, David Luiz. There we oh, go. Show me the man, Mr. David Luiz. 
What a I player. I was also thinking William, too. Good but show, I knew man. Was it Austin with Damn. Saka was? Yeah, and Emmy Martinez. How crazy. I knew that would throw you guys off. That was a good one. I was I even was thinking not. Ezekiel Lovetsi, but that wouldn't make sense. He's I was thinking Chelsea. about Lovetsi. Yeah. I forgot. All right, all right. Last Damn. player. Good one. Really good. And then we'll go to career path. I've played with David Beckham, Gigi Buffon, Leo Messi, Jorginho, and Angel Di Maria. I have won a Euro. I've only played for one major team in Europe's top five, and I've never won a Champions League with them. Name the players again. Bex, Buffon, Messi, Jorginho, Di Maria. I've won a Euro. It's probably the one that you want to hold Benucci? on to. Benucci? Nope. When did uh, Benucci and Messi play together, James? Yeah, that's a yeah. very good point. Uh, Maybe in uh, World Aid or something? <laughs> <laughs> Soccer Aid? Euro. See you later. Some charity match, probably. It looks like I'm thinking, but there's actually nothing in my brain right now. <laughs> Welcome Say to my life. Say the players again. Beckham, Buffon, Messi, Jorginho, and Di Maria. Verratti. There we go. Mikey Singh is on fire Singh. today. On fire. Well done. Marco Verratti. Yes. Yeah. All right, guys. PSG. Let's move right along. Player path. Some of these are easy than others. We're starting. Beverin, Donetsk, Olympiacos, Monaco, Barcelona, Man City, Olympiacos, Kindao, Huangai. <laughs> Pardon my pronunciation. <laughs> Say that again. Beverin. Sounded like just one long sentence. Medellar, Donetsk, Olympiacos, Monaco, Barcelona, Man City, Olympiacos, King Dao, Huang Hai. It's a chunk there that you just want to focus on me. Monaco to Man City. Man City to China. No, Man City, Olympiacos, oh, China. Okay, okay. That makes a little difference. <laughs> well. Man City, Olympiacos. Monaco. Best part is to see how, how stressed Birdie gets. Barcelona to Man City. I'm going to leave that one is right there. Is it Yaya Toure? It is Yaya Toure. This guy's on mm. fire. He's just... Okay, so some of these, flying. I thought that like you guys would have... Okay, I don't There's know. nothing going on here right now, honestly. <laughs> All right. Monaco, Juventus, Arsenal, Barcelona, New York Red Bull. Oh, Henri. There we ah, go, James. Yeah. Some see some I'm just going to give away. So you know what? When, when I get one right, it's like this massive sense of relief. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. Upon me. I need one. I need one bad. All right. Independiente, Atletico Madrid, Manchester City, Barcelona. Sergio Aguero. There, Aguero! Oh. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Well, you're ahead of James now. Massive. Sorry, I'm actually keeping score over here, too. <laughs> All right. In the room. Arsenal, Crystal Palace, Chelsea, Roma, LA Galaxy, Derby County. Uh, Derby County. Say it again. Say it again. <laughs> what, Arsenal. What, that, what do you say? <laughs> say it again. I heard the four-letter word. My favorite word. Oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. We'll I just apologize. beep it. What are the teams? <laughs> Why you, Arsenal. We say the word. Arsenal. Yeah. <laughs> Arsenal, Crystal yeah. Palace, yeah. Chelsea, Roma, LA Galaxy, Derby County. Roma to Galaxy. Oh. To Derby County. Derby County. How do I not know this? Tammy Abram? Oh, uh, Edgar. No. Da no, 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 no. He, he went to Derby. Counts, counts One minute guess. left. One minute yeah, left. Okay, um, right. Sorry, say the teams again. <laughs> who, who, Arsenal? Arsenal, Palace, Chelsea, Roma, Galaxy, Derby County. Galaxy. <laughs> Derby County has got me. It's got me an old player. I like Galaxy, though. Uh oh. Oh, 25 seconds. Say it if you know it. I can't say, say it. it, say it. No, I'm, I'm out. Let's Guys, this is no, our last no, one. 20 seconds. This is our last one. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just, Just say it. it. But he's, did he start? Okay, right? well, we have to wrap yeah. up here. Gentlemen, it's Ashley Cole Ashley on Cole, the yeah. board there. Guys, congrats to Mikey because he absolutely ruined the two of you. And you came Thank in. Guys. Thank you. Walk in the walk. Thank you. <laughs> oh, well, that's it. That's Next, it. Time for a break and then we'll do something else. Room 442 is brought to you by North Star Bets. That's a win. We divided the players between the three of us. So I chose three players, three different positions, gave it to James, Albert, Mikey, and then I chose two myself. So they have no clue what this 
lineup is. They have no clue which one picked who, and it, it's just this is gonna uh, be a bit of a uh, yeah, it's mishmash. Gonna, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be interesting. So I'm the only one right now that knows this formation. And apologies is that you're laughing? Because it's so pathetic to anyone who may be offended. But no, I think it's it's a good group. It's a good group. So let's show. Four four twos oh. combined best eleven. I, Gentlemen, who do you notice that's missing here off the top of your head? No, no KDB. No Holland. No Massive. Holland. Oh my god, no Holland. Massive. This is ridiculous. Who took Mbappe? Uh took James Sharman right beside you. You see the all World right, Cup final? All right, all right. Charms. This is how it's gonna work. <laughs> We're gonna start from the back and then we'll move our way up and I'll go through who picked them and then I wanna hear why you picked them. So Can starting you? from the back. I wonder who took the keeper. Mikey Singh taking Mark <laughs> Andre Ter Stegen. It wasn't Sarah. Oh, it was you. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was Sarah for sure. I for sure would have taken the keeper. He's the best keeper in Europe's top five, but oh. you tell me why. Yeah, 27 clean sheets and 47 appearances. That is the most clean sheets out of anybody in Europe's top five leagues. All right, let's move on to uh, Albert here with a uh, center back, yes. Kim Min Jae. Napoli. I like that. Dude, I love Napoli. We've been talking with Napoli all season long. So it was, for the left side at center back, it was between him and actually Alessandro Bastone. And I went with him because Napoli won it. I think the best defensive record in the city. Uh, um, no coincidence that I think he missed his second leg of the quarterfinal against AC Milan. Yeah. And Napoli really struggled. I think he's probably the defender of the year in city. Uh, him and Bastoni are probably neck and neck. I'd probably go with with the South Korean, but I just I can't find any other left-footed center back that even comes close to those mm-hmm, two. Mm-hmm. All right, well, uh, I had uh, center back there, Ruben Diaz. I don't really think there's much to say uh, against him. He was, you know, one of City's best performers, great defender, obviously won the treble. Shout out, though, to Ronald Araujo at Barca because he was also yeah. one of the reasons him and Ter Stegen, I think, were fantastic. He's such a leader on that team, but when you look at what Ruben Diaz has accomplished with City. I think you have to give it to him. In fact, James also picked him, and then I said, no, no, no. Yeah. Um, <laughs> who was who ended up being the man of the match in the Champions League final? Do do we know? I can't remember. Man of the match? Rodri? Because he's. I think it was Rodri. Yeah. yeah. It, it could have been sure. him. By the yeah. way, it could have been Ruben Diaz. Yeah. He yeah. was so good. He yeah. won every single battle. But I mean, if you're looking at center back in the center, there is there anyone that I think he's probably the best center half in the world football right now. Like what about Vardiol? Great pick on his way to Man City, actually. Potentially. Is, is Record-breaking deal, apparently, yeah. if they want the most money for any defender. He, defender. I mean, listen, he, in the World Cup, he was he was mm-hmm. the best centre-back, I think. Right? Yeah, he, he was definitely. incredible. Incredible. Yeah. I, think, I think he was good during the clubs. Maybe yeah. not the level, and he didn't get the spotlight he got in the yeah. World Cup. Yeah, that's what it is. Still, I uh, but, I mean, Ruben Diaz, you can't really debate it. No. Like, he is the leader at that Man City Ruben back Diaz, line. Ruben Diaz, Araujo, Militao was great for Real Madrid yeah. this season, actually, as well, to be fair. But uh, I don't think there's anyone quite on the DS level. <laughs> All right, moving on to the other side here. Albert, you wanted Bastoni, and James gave you Bastoni. Yeah, I, I think we should quickly mention the formation here, right? Now we're in 4 4 2, yeah. right? We know, like, we you know, 4 3 3 is the 3 4 3 is a popular, yeah. but 3 5 2 kind of last month or so has become, you know, kind of in vogue a little bit. Yeah. Allows you to get an extra midfielder in there. So we understand it's not the perfect formation, but for this and for debate, I think it works as well. You guys we'll find can make out it later work. On. Yeah. Yeah. And listen, formation, formation. As Pep once said, mm-hmm. or was that Cliff Fletcher? I'm not sure. <laughs> One of those things. That's, that's an old Maple Leaf hockey. Uh... <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, Bastoni. Uh, listen, as, as Bernie mentioned, like for Inter Milan, he was absolutely brilliant throughout yeah. the season. Uh, they were good defensively, not not great domestically, but in the Champions League, they were really good. And I was trying to go a little bit off the off the board a little bit with him, you know, not the typical choice at centre back. So Bastoni's a young guy, being linked with some more big clubs. We'll see if Inter can keep him this summer. Be interesting, but a really a really cultured centre back. Mm-hmm. Where it's it's a little interesting in that midfield. We'll start off on the left side with Mikey saying having Bukayo Saka. On the right side, yeah. Sorry, on the right side. Yep, that's me. Uh, right wing back here, Bukayo Saka. Mikey, tell us why you picked him. I mean, I think this was the year where he really took that step forward and emerged as one of the best players in the world. He was if not Odegaard, then Saka was probably the most important player on mm-hmm. that Arsenal team. You take Saka out of that side, they finished nowhere close to the level that they finished. What is it, 15 goals, 11 assists this season? I mean, the numbers also back it up, but it's not just the numbers. It's what he's developed into in terms of being a guy that can drive at defenders, beat guys 1v1, and kind of do it all for this Arsenal team. So, yeah, for him taking that next step, Arsenal was one of the best stories that we saw this year. Bukayo Saka was probably one of the biggest reasons for that. So up next, then, we have to his left. This is James Sharman, Jude Bellingham, and uh, well, I might have something to say about that. But well, listen, say- did he watch 
Borussia Dortmund this year and who was their best player it was oh Jude yeah they're bottling it in the last game oh. classic last game. so you're going to judge him on one game are you he's added yeah. goals now to his whole CV um, there's a reason why Real Madrid have paid 114 million pounds for him he's there officially today actually they announced their signing um, Jude Bellingham's going to be a future England captain maybe a future Real Madrid captain he has every part of what a world class player needs to have he brings it to the table mm-hmm. so uh, I, I don't think you can really debate Jude Bellingham being this team can you? Oh I can debate What about Kevin De Bruyne? Kevin De Bruyne Are you kidding me? Like that's Kevin's spot and that's who should be there I'll be honest with you but what happened was I gave you two the center mids there Mm -hmm. both of you thinking that you would the other would choose KDB Well there's an issue up front with that um, as well, we'll get yep. to that later. Oh yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. We'll talk about yeah. it. We'll but talk you're right. You're listening. Of course, De Bruyne could get in that team. Well, De Bruyne should be there over Bellingham. I, wasn't, I didn't care so much from... about right side, left side. Just give me a give me yeah. a midfield. Yeah. What about Martin so, Odegaard? Yeah, honestly, he will. That's a great yeah, show. he can get in there. He's good. This good central sh- midfielder. Sh- I put Bellingham above him right now. Yeah, uh, shout out for this our season. Boy, uh, he had a better season. Both great seasons. We love him. They're both great seasons. I'm not saying one had a terrible season. Both great. I would take Bellingham in my team right now, before Odegaard. Yes. We have talk criteria. K- we got to talk criteria. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know about that yet either. Uh, also, KDB over both of them. In my opinion, he should be there over both of them. Like, KDB should be on the stage. Yeah. It, it, He's it, fragile. It, it, when the moments get tough, he keeps breaking himself. Oh, Jay. <laughs> every Champions League, League every final. Every Champions League final. Crazy. We all remember Stefan Estacchio nutmegging him at the World Cup. So. Oh. <laughs> Jesus, here we go. He's also a little bit a little bit boring, given De Bruyne. Okay, you know? so, yeah. That's I mean, why. Listen, after ridiculous. You, you win trophies, yeah. and I just went home, spent so, time so with my Katie, family. Like, so KDB isn't going to be on the best Grealish. 11. KDB isn't going to be on the best 11. He's That's not going to be fun James going James out James Chapman, you are saying KDB should not be on the best 11. Um, well, clearly not. <laughs> Clip it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> he all wasn't right. great all year, you know. He was great no, down the stretch. Yeah. He had a pretty poor he was first City's three best or four months player. of the season. I think he was more important to that's, Manchester that's City debatable. than Holland. More important. He fed Holland half of those half of those 51 goals are pretty important. Pretty important, but I think <laughs> tactically he was way more important. He He's like the, the engine that makes City run. Right, but we're not debating, you know, Holland versus De Bruyne. It's Bellingham v De Bruyne. Yeah, and it's, and, it's and KDB I the think, entire honestly, way. If you're building a team tomorrow like with a, with a blank canvas and you can pick one of them, right now you're picking Jude Bellingham. Hold on. So Wait, Jude who Bellingham? is picking Jude Bellingham? Jude Bellingham? Throw the age in there. That's tough. I on. mean... Ooh. Jude Bellingham's 19 years old. He went for 114 million euros or pounds yeah KDB would go for more than that if he went today zing uh, and he's might, like 10 years he's, older at least I'm not saying KDB's a bad <laughs> footballer he's incredible he's probably the best arguably the best midfielder the Premier League's seen in the world, for a maybe very right long now? time right maybe ever maybe ever Maybe ever, but I'm saying this Jude season Ballard alone, Bellingham didn't take a, didn't take a match off this this year. He didn't. No, that's why he's he looks so exhausted. You can bank on him. Mm-hmm. If you're building a team for one season or building a team for the future, that's no. We're basing well, it on well, this, this past this season. season. Okay. No, I'm just saying moving forward. If you had to pick, if that's, you're building that's a not team, the question. Now we're getting the, into that's semantics. That's the question I'm asking. If you're building a team for one season, one, one season? season, who do you take? It's KDB all day. Yeah. Uh, uh, after this. Yeah, season, next I'm season. taking Bellingham after the the, the career the, the the best KDB versus the best Bellingham. I'm taking KDB. We haven't seen right the now. best Bellingham. We don't. But we haven't know. seen the best Bellingham. Yeah, right. it, it might, this might better. be it. He could peak. We don't know. He's not going to peak. At I don't think he is. But I mean, I'm just saying we don't know. We are speaking. <laughs> pretty sure about that. <laughs> no, but, uh, this is he's James, not this is your English bias coming. I kind of right wish now. it's not my English bias. Yeah. I put, I put a Bastonia. Okay. So stats, <laughs> just stats wise, Jude Bellingham actually had a really good season. 14 goals, seven assists Shock. <laughs> in 42 appearances. Right. right, all competitions. Kevin De Bruyne, 49 appearances, 10 goals. Wait for it. 31 assists. That's insane. Because he had the big man up top. That's the only reason What? Because somebody had to feed them. This is what I'm talking I'm about. I'm not saying KDB is a bad <laughs> and footballer. And he only, he only assisted on eight of Holland goals, by the way. Just eight. Yeah. So he was doing everything else. And you said central assists. midfielder too, right? You said central midfielder. That was what I was given there, right? It wasn't the right side of central midfielder, was it? I don't think it was, but KDB could play there. I'm not. Yeah, I, I know he can. Oh, okay. But you, you've got five midfielders, and I've been told to pick one midfielder, oh, right. and I you chose Bellingham. I don't think You know who I would take over both of them? Kavicha Kavartskelia. Hey. That's why right. I put him. Well, we'll get to you know what? He's, then. He's, not a, he's not a center mid, but I'm like, I got to get this guy into this team. He had a fantastic yeah. season. What, 12 goals, 10 assists, top assist guy in City A. In terms of dribbling pass players one on one, only Rafael Leal had more than him in City A. Um, yeah. He's only going to get better. I hope he stays at Napoli. Probably not going to happen. But if I'm building a team next season, I'm taking him over Bellingham and KDB. Just throwing out. I can't get over 31 assists. No, I that just is can't insane. even Thir- talk you, about you this. You said what? 12 assists there? Eight to Holland. 
No, 12 oh, assists. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, uh, 10 assists. 10 assists. KDB, KDB is not had 31, 31 Dude, assists. Dude, I assume someone was taking I did away. not choose. He's, I chose two of these players. You know what he is? He's a flat track bully, that's why. Yeah, yeah. Oh, gets, exactly. gets yeah. One-dimensional player. Uh, <laughs> the majority of, the, of anyone those get Anyone for you guys get in there above uh, Kvara? Maybe a John no, Stone? Like kinda... No, 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 no. No? Okay. I okay, love no, how we had has some Napoli love in there. Again, I I, I think Odegaard probably. Oh, yeah, Odegaard I threw him in there because he needed to make the team. He wasn't going to be one of the strikers. He wasn't going to be on the left side. Don't worry, Osimhen didn't make it though. But you're certainly getting ahead of TF and Hernandez. But anyway, keep going. All right, all right. So we have Rodri. This is uh, Mikey's Shocking. pick. There's a. Uh, I don't think there's any. Who's any sorry? Oh, Rodri? Rodri hanging uh, yeah. down there. I mean, come on. Camavinga. No, the but not better than one. Rodri this season. Camavinga's been great, but not better than Rodri. The only Camavinga one who is remotely like close is Casemiro. Casemiro. That's the yeah. only yeah. one who's remotely close. I like close. that. I like that um, but a lot. Rodri on, on Manchester City, let's second in the Premier League in pla- passes completed. Um, most line breaking passes in the Premier League. Second best pass completion in the Premier League. And I think what's most impressive is that he played the most minutes on Man City when mm-hmm. Pep Guardiola loves to rotate his yeah. side. He played about 45 matches for Man City and that's you he it's you, you can't drop him he's just that important to that squad so. and all, all those stats you mentioned they're number one in the Champions League mm-hmm. as, as well mm-hmm. just all out dominant performance and I'm so happy he scored the goal mm-hmm. in the final take care left wing back Teo Hernandez all right so here's here's how I, I went through this there's a couple of players that could be there our own Alfonso Davies injured all season or for a lot of it if he wasn't probably a great shot enough. Zinchenko same thing Injured, mm. not great. Uh, Alejandro Balde for Barcelona actually had a fantastic season, but I don't think he was maybe as influential what, as Teo Hernandez was to AC Milan. This guy has so much pace. He creates chances. He also defends. And then the cherry on top was him for France this season. I know you didn't love it, but at the World <sighs> Cup, he was absolutely crucial for that French was, team. Uh, okay. Move up All front right. because it doesn't matter if you score... 52 goals this season. You're not getting picked for our team, Erling Holland. No, 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 no. Let's no. start. I, I assumed he was being picked for Okay, what once again. What does that say again. right there? I'm sure somebody picked Holland. <laughs> okay, so once again, okay, we'll start off with James on the left. Yeah. Killian and Which is controversial Mbappe. now. Had I have, have chosen Mbappe 24 hours ago, um, fair enough, but I wouldn't have picked him today because of all the crap he's putting PSG you're tired, through you're tired once of him. again. I'm so bored of him. Mm. And listen, he had, a, he had a decent French season. He led the league once again. He was great in the World Cup final. Yeah, I, I can't uh, get over the final. Yeah, I think more I so can't him get in it the, out of my head. The World yeah, Cup was yeah, much yeah. more influential. It was incredible. Than the what he, I haven't seen a performance like that. I don't no, know if ever. Right. Um, it was just yeah. mind blown. That's why I put him there. And listen, we know he doesn't like playing centrally, but it's a three-five-two. And he's yeah. not a wing back. Mm. Um, so I put him in there, but I can understand why there might be debate there. Yeah, I'm on fine with Mbappe, thinking that there's no Holland, but I win Harry Kane. I know you uh, did. So, and I already so, heard that. Oh no, Victor Osimhen. Yeah, I, I don't so know what Ossiman, else. What I don't understand. And I get it. He plays for Tottenham. And that's not why. Vinicius but that, that's not why. We got But show, hold on. Let me talk about Kane first. We're talking about Vinicius and all these other players. Kane gets shit on. It's unbelievable. What else do you want this guy to do? Only Who shits Holland. Him? Who shits on him, only Holland scored more than him. Only Holland. How does he not get into that team? He gets above Ossiman. He gets above Vinicius. He gets above Benzema. Oh, I'm, I'm Thirty goals, twenty-six different teams, forty percent of Spurs goals. You look at Napoli. You want to go to Ossiman? They had like twenty-five it's, it's, different it's goal as scores. If you, you, you pick Kane, assuming that everyone's against you. But <laughs> yes, he's against literally you. like okay. crying. We're, we're, no, we're all saying, you know, fair enough. It's like he gets, <laughs> he gets no credit. I don't understand. Room four four two is brought to you by North Star Bets. That's a win. Welcome back to Room 442. Uh, I guess if you look at the last week or so, the, the, the team that won the week has to be Real Madrid. That they finally secure the signature of Jude Bellingham. And Mbappe says, I'm not leaving PSG, but I'm not re signing there. What's he doing? Like, well, what is he Just doing? He's causing PSG more headaches, which is fine. I'm not against that necessarily. <laughs> but the only club you think that could get Mbappe if they're going to sell him is Real Madrid. Manchester United. <laughs> hey, it'd be a fit there. It's interesting, though, with Real Madrid because Mbappe kind of made them bend over backwards last season to only not get him. So I think Real Madrid are in the best position possible because it's all on Mbappe now to make a move. They're here and they're like, listen, if you want to come, come, but we're not going to do this song and dance again. And I don't blame them. I think with the Benzema leaving as well, that really kind of moved things around for them. But... If I'm Real Madrid, I'm looking at the sky and thinking, like, I- I'd way rather get Harry Kane if you got Vinny on the edge anyways. Didn't Mbappe just say he's 
going to play next year? He well, said no, he's yeah. going to. But well, he says, yeah, but he won't resign. And he's a free agent next year. So right. PSG are basically going to try and kick him or, out so yeah, they, so they yeah, get money they for, him. for him. Yeah, there's, yeah. PSG is not going to let this guy go for free. No chance. No. What, well, what is this guy doing? Like, uh, why do we do this every, every single year? year? Because he has PSG Mbappe. by the balls. He can do whatever he wants. That's why. Spoiled brat. But yeah. do you not think that would rub some other clubs the wrong way? Absolutely. Like, like, uh, I don't yeah, know. About yes this. and no, because so good. that's yeah. the thing, right? You you just you just play that champ, uh, Champions League, the World Cup final. Yeah. Like, well, this, <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, yeah, he's got yeah, some we'll take it. In the closet. <laughs> ah, look at that. Look at the pace out wide. Yeah. The thing is, where does he fit at Real Madrid? Yeah. Haven't they got Vinicius, got Vinicius Jr.? You make him too. fit. And he wants to play you on the wing. You know that he wants to play yeah. on the wing, right? Yeah, that's you make the thing. him fit. You, you say you make him fit, but it... He only wants what he wants, so mm-hmm. he's not gonna like adjust his. Harry Kane makes so much more sense. Real Madrid, Real Madrid is used to this. They're used to this type of drama with these these, these types of players, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, if if he wants to go to Real Madrid, they're, I think they would do whatever it takes to bring him in. You'd be crazy not to. Do you think this is tainting his legacy? No, nah. I think staying in France is tainting his legacy. Yeah. yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Right, he needs to play in a big league. He's being wasted in France. Let's be honest, right? It's not a strong league compared to the top four leagues in, in world football. We know how good he can be. He can dominate any league he goes to. And it's probably going to be Spain, if not England, because no one else in Waffle are going to afford him yeah. at this point. But just get it over and done with. And if PSG's, do they want the baggage? I mean, listen, they've lost Messi this year. They might be losing Neymar. Can they, though, lose him as they've well? They've lost Sergio Ramos, summer? too. Yeah. Ramos, too, right? Maybe it's the best thing for them. What if they go to the front, too, Vinicius rebuild. and Mbappe? I know. Yeah. Well, well, we'll wait and see. Yeah. Time for next season. All right, that's been Rim 442. <laughs> we are back, same time, same place, probably in August sometime. We'll see you then. <laughs> Room 442 is brought to you by North Star Bets. That's a win.